Parker. Now, there's a reason I didn't go with Billy Corgan. Now, Billy Corgan? I'm, Billy Joe. Bi- no, from, uh, God dang it, uh, Travis Parker from Blink-182, lead singer. Come yeah. on. Oh, uh, Tom DeLonge. Tom, Tom DeLonge. Why do I, uh. yeah. Why do I? I keep when I when you say Billy Corgan, I keep wanting to say Billy Corgi, like a dog, <laughs> yeah. like a dog named Billy Corgi. Billy Corgi. <laughs> Billy, if you have a Corgi, please name him Billy. Yeah, that'd be awesome. If you could do a mashup of a Corgi with Billy Corgan's face, that'd do be awesome it. Too. That'd be awesome. <laughs> The verse is so crucial. I spit it deep as Confucius. I leave you leaving with lesions, lacerations, and mass confusion. Playing you losing, I leave your city in ruins. What's going on, everybody? We're back with another episode of the, the Trash, Trash Talkers Podcast. We made it. We made it. Yeah, we did. I thought you was gonna forget about that. We made it there nah, for a second. Never. never. What's been up with your smoke dog? Oh man, lots of things that I don't even remember. Whenever you ask. Damn. Usually I'm the one with the bad memory. <laughs> That's crazy when I get put on the spot. I know we talked about it before, but, you know, you do so much, and then when somebody's like, what have you been doing? I'm, nothing. nothing. <laughs> nah. Everybody says nothing, right? What movie's that from? <laughs> nah. Nah. What you got on my 40, homie? Nah. nah. <laughs> oh, you got some. What have I been doing? Um, actually, the fights just passed this past weekend. Uh, you know, great, great MMA card that just happened. Uh, I've got like a ritual now because you know the fights start at like a, like when it's a big pay per view that I want to watch. It, it's the pre early prelims start, and I watch all the fights. So it starts from at four, and the prelims start at ten. So I'm up for Jesus. eight hours watching every single fight. Damn. But I've got a ritual now to where I go get Mexican street corn. I get two big ass Red Bulls because I want to watch the entire thing, <laughs> and I don't want to like be falling asleep. Yeah. So I'll eat my Mexican, or I'll drink the Red Bull, eat the Mexican corn, drink the Red Bull, and then by the time that happens, the fight's on, and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. <laughs> so it was a good card this weekend. So that's yeah. what I did. Oh yeah, yeah. But no trash talkers. Listen, before we get started, again, y'all know uh, if you haven't. Uh, seen by the title uh the topic we're going to be checking out today is who are the goats of these certain genres and the certain genres we're talking about today we're going to be doing grunge Mm -hmm. new metal Mm -hmm. pop punk Mm -hmm. and rap and rap yeah yeah and we could always do a part two if you guys like this episode we can come back and give our opinions on other genres there's a trillion and 17 different yes, genres. Yes, absolutely. We could make this a forever video. But no, mm-hmm. today we're going to focus on these four. Stick around. But before we do that, you guys know we read the top three comments from the previous podcast. And the previous podcast was, should certain music be banned in certain yes. places? Mm-hmm. We're going to read that. Also, we're going to read your birthdays for later on in the uh, podcast for a segment that we call WTF. It does not mean what the It means what What the the Florida. Indeed it does. Let's start with the top three comments from last podcast. Should certain music be banned Mm -hmm. in certain companies? Let's see here as soon as I can find What are they talking about? Let's see what the trash talkers have said. So, the number three most liked comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, The number three most liked comment comes from Jenny Reese 420. Mm. Shout out to you, Jenny Reese. Jenny Reese says, great topic. Censorship sucks. (laughs) Yeah. The entire time you guys were talking, I kept, I kept, I kept getting reminded of the episode of the Outer Limits Music of the Spheres. If you don't know about it, you should check it out. The concept is really cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Shout out to you, Jenny Reese. I haven't seen it. I would like to, though. Absolutely. We'll check that out, Jenny <clears throat> Reese. Excuse me. The number two most liked comment from that podcast comes from Alex... Alex Sarah Official, 9765. Shout out to Alex Sarah Official. Says, Censor- censorship is nothing but saying, quote unquote, I don't like this and it should be banned. Absolutely. And when yeah. something is banned, it opens the door to ban everything else. Yes. Nothing should be banned in art, even if it's provocative. It's yeah. our responsibility as a society if we pay attention to it or not. Mm-hmm. Art in general has been trying to be, be banned and censored since hundreds of years, but yeah. it always fails. Long live to music and art in general. Yeah, he's so true. Once you start banning things, then that leads people who don't like other certain things that they, they want their voice uh, heard also. Like, well, you should ban this because we don't like this. Yeah. And then you should ban that because those people don't like that. And over-regulation just re- leads to more regulation. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. L- lately, it seems like there are some rap 
songs that people were trying to ban. It's like <laughs> if you ban that, yeah, then then you're you're stifling art, opening a big mm-hmm. big door there. The number one most liked comment from that podcast comes from John Cheney nine five zero. Shout out John Cheney says no music should be banned, even if you hate it. Someone mm-hmm. else might hate the music you like. So if that's the case, all music would be banned. It's called. Freedom of speech. <laughs> That's exactly it. Totally yeah. agree. Which we put out a video for. Go check out Freedom of Speech. Great video. Yeah, all music would be banned. You think about it. Even other forms of art. Because if you're saying, okay, we have to ban this certain type of rap or, or metal or whatever that portrays gory lyrics or you know violent lyrics. Okay, well, then we got to take out the movies. Yeah. Then we got to take out the video games. Oh, well, how about No more that, GTA. How about that painting that Vincent Van Gogh painted? Yeah. Take that out too. Or yeah. what about that uh, book that Stephen King wrote? Yeah, I take that yeah, out too. A little too gory. Yeah. Yeah. It's just once you once you take one down, and like you said, there's other people like, well, if they took that down, then this should be taken out. It's yeah. it opens a big door of just like yeah, because you think you're creating a utopian society that ends up being dystopian, dystopian. because you have no freedoms. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Now to our to our topic of the day. Yeah. Be? Our top, our goats for these particular four bands. Would mm-hmm. you like to go first or grunge? For these particular four genres, yes. Again, yes. guys, this, these are kind of our opinions. We yeah. tried to keep them, in, you know, into into the in the relativity of what <laughs> yeah. people know, because somewhat uh, objective yes. uh, and subjective at the same time, but. Yeah, and like I said, these are just four of the biggest genres, so if you guys have suggestions for other genres you want to hear our opinions on, let us know. Yeah, and you guys let us know your goats as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. All right, for grunge. Grunge. Think about this. There's definitely a big four of grunge, right? So you would think if it's going to be the goat, the greatest of all time, it has to be one of those four, right? Everybody, I think, I don't know what you picked, but... I think everybody would go with Kurt Cobain, right? But he was a shooting star. He was the guy that rose to prominence and then was gone very quickly. So I think to be a GOAT, you have to have longevity also. That's why I picked Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam. Oh, Pearl Jam. Yeah, because they might have the... Yeah. I think out of grunge, they have the most longevity of the world. Uh, see, I want to... Think about it. Soundgarden is no more. Nirvana is no more. Uh, Alice in Chains is no more. Uh, Pearl Jam is still running. Okay, so my grunt, my let me give you my goat of grunt, mm-hmm. and I'm glad you prefaced that with the what we define grunge, yeah. or I'm yeah. sorry, what we uh, define it's, it's goat. goat. Yeah. You know, it should be longevity. It should be technically sales. If we were just talking sales, it'd probably be Nirvana. I mean, uh, yeah, or um, Pearl Jam is up there though. I, it's crazy because we've, I, or I'm sure you have too, but I've seen so many comments that said. God, Nirvana so overrated. But yeah. you, again, this, it goes back to the if you like it, you like it. If you don't, if you don't. Yeah, absolutely. Now, for my goat of grunge is Jerry Cantrell. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason I picked that, of course, Alice in Chains, great band, you know, and most people would say, well, why didn't you pick Lane? But the reason I picked Jerry is because Jerry is the creative force behind a lot yeah. of their songs. Yeah. Behind a lot, a lot of their biggest songs. Mm-hmm. And, and you had said, uh, Eddie Vedder might be the one that's going on the longest. Mm-hmm. I read something. Think about this. Jerry Cantrell, after Lane passed, who yeah. did they replace Lane with? Uh, Big Willie. Big Willie. Yeah. That ha- Jerry had a lot to do with picking Big Willie. Yeah, see, I didn't even think about that because Alice, Alice in Chains, Chains is, is still, still going. going today. Yeah, but uh, see, I automatically thought Lane, and Lane is no longer with them, but Alice Jerry Cantrell makes still sense. Going. Yeah. I don't, now that's a question you guys might have to let us know in the concert. In the con, in the I was gonna say concert. In the uh, comments, who who went longer? And again, it yeah. really doesn't matter. It's your yeah. It's really. Opinion. I mean, at that point, you got to be like, who started first? Then because they're both still going. Jerry Cantrell is still out there. Eddie Vedder is still Stop out there. there. Who started first? Because you know, uh, Alice and Chains were doing the glam yeah, metal before thing. that. Yeah, and not only that, dude, but Jerry, he was also the guitars. Like mm-hmm. he didn't want to be the face necessarily. He was all, dude. He was the backup singer. But he kind of <laughs> was though, right? I mean, of course, everybody focuses on Lane. He's the singer, yeah. But Jerry Cantrell made a name for himself yeah. outside of okay. just being the guitarist for same, Alice in Chains. Same thing with Eddie Vedder. Mm-hmm. I, I would say me and you both have two good picks that yeah, you yeah. could argue are you the You could girls. argue either one. And sure. it, it, it's so crazy you didn't pick Kurt 
because most people would be like, how can you not? Nirvana's one of the biggest like, selling... I get it. He's probably the most known, per se. Probably is, but uh, they just didn't have the longevity. Yeah, and I think to be a GOAT, you have to have been in there for a long time. And then some people could say in the same breath, well, Hollywood, how come you didn't pick Lane? That yeah. goes against the longevity thing. It's like, yeah. how long? Yeah. I mean, we're not taking... Jerry Control makes sense to me. But Absolutely. N- and we're not taking anything away from Lane or, mm-hmm. you know, Kurt. It's just our definition of goat, you got to put that work in. Yeah. You got to. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on to the next one. I'll go first on this one. All right. New Metal. Yeah. Who I think the goat is, again, Hollywood's opinion, what I think or who I think the goat is. Can I is. guess? What? I want to take a guess at who you got. Who you got? Chino. Yeah, of course, dude. <laughs> yes, of I know. Of course, man. With Deftones, dude. Think about this. Chino been doing it forever. Chino has made songs with rappers, still doing it today. But not only that. Chino, again, I'm a such a I'm a sucker for that chill, soft. He makes a type of music that I enjoy when it comes to grunge. And I know you could say that's the grunge. New metal. I'm sorry, the new metal yeah. sound. Mm-hmm. But he makes it to where it's not all, I get it all for the nookie. Huh. Yeah. He made it where or it's I'm like, mad at my dad. Yeah, it's yeah. like, like it makes you want to cry and punch a hole in the wall at the same time. Mm-hmm. But the, why I put him as the GOAT, the dude's got Deftones, mm-hmm. Fireband, Team Sleep, mm-hmm. Fireband, Crosses, mm-hmm. Fireband, Psalms, fire band and there's like i think there's like three more that's just my opinion but for mm-hmm. him to have so many bands and still doing it today how can you not I'm trying to think if maybe i heard somewhere that they have may have actually been the ones to kick off the genre damn hmm. i mean of course of course like everybody puts the there's a comment in every video that we talk about new metal that yes rap metal was around before and we we know about public enemy and uh, you know uh Anthrax and Run DMC, uh, Run DMC yeah. and Aerosmith, yeah, and uh, even Mike Patton sometimes gets oh, thrown in there. Oh God! Yeah, it, even there's even a case to be made that uh, Primus had something to do with new metal yeah. being funk metal, but uh, yeah, a lot of people say that that scene coming out of uh, California, you know, it's not specifically LA, but uh, all around uh, Southern California. Dude, I did not think about Mike that Patton. Gino. Oh, Mike Patton? Yeah. I did not think about Mike Patton. I'm sorry. You, <laughs> yeah. you brought him up, man. Yeah. God. I mean, some people give him the credit. Who you got? Uh, I have Jonathan Davis. Of From Corn. Yes. Okay. Yes. The the grand... Well, yeah, I don't know. You can't say the grandfathers because of things like I just said. They weren't technically the first to do new metal, but they were the Metallica of new the metal, biggest. in my opinion. Yeah. Man. Like, there was a shooting star in New Metal also, much like Nirvana, there was Limp Biscuit that came, shot straight up to the top, took over the scene, and faded away. Huh. Luckily, they're all still alive, but uh, they faded away out of the scene. Korn kept going. They stayed on their steady pace. They have the longevity. They are still doing it to this day. And uh, Dude, Jonathan they got a Davis, concert coming out soon. I've been getting an ad for a concert oh, they got coming out soon. Yeah. Let's say maybe I saw something about that. Yeah, it's like him Did, on the Do you remember front. who they were touring with? Uh, Gojira. Really? Ah, I can't remember. But there's a lot of great concerts coming up yeah. throughout the summer. But yeah, uh, they they have the longevity. Corn, uh, Don, Jonathan yeah. Davis is one of the most recognizable faces of the entire genre, if not all of metal music and rock. You know, now that I'm thinking about it. Some people, I feel like you and you might say industrial. Some people might say industrial. But would you say Marilyn Manson is new metal? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I would say industrial. But uh, he's had his run with mixing hip hop into metal. So. You know, you know the one word I want to say. What's it? He's got grills. <laughs> Gangsta golf, man. Yeah. Gangsta golf. Yeah. Damn, that's See, I think I think that was the thing is he kind of branded what he was doing as gangster golf, or the fans did, whoever came up with that term. That gangster golf is different than new metal. Hmm. But yeah, I mean he, he definitely blended some hip hop in there, and as we all know, he was a hip hop fan, so interesting. Trash and talk- worked with a lot of rappers. Yes, it did. Yeah. Trash talkers, you guys let let me know in the comment section. Would y'all say, hey, that there was a I think there was a point that some people would say, Hey, he was I don't know, maybe not new metal. 
Yeah. Because he's worked with rappers, you know, he's got a song with DMX and uh, several others, but I don't think I've ever heard Marilyn Manson Be, rap himself. And well, not only that, we've also came to learn that there's a difference between new metal and rap metal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. There's a big difference. Yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah, you need the down tune guitars. You need the the funk bass. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a little different, but um, our next one. What's our next topic? Pop punk, pop punk, not just regular punk. No, no, and we can do regular punk later. Yeah. But I thought we would pick for the biggest genres, you know, okay. uh, outside of thrash also. Uh, but pop punk. When you think Let me of guess. when you think of pop punk, there is also a big four of pop punk. I feel like you're gonna say like the Offspring or something, or the lead singer of the Offspring. No, Dexter. I is thought that, about it. I absolutely damn. thought about it. I don't forgot his name, but you know, yeah, yeah but you must have Dexter really thought Point about Dexter. It. Yeah, <laughs> is that his name? <laughs> yeah, that's his name. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know Dex- it's Dexter, but uh, I thought it, I think it's actually Dexter Point Dexter. Wow, yeah, that is his legal. If that's his legal on, name, I'm, I don't know if it's his legal. I name. I was about to, uh, stage name, cool, but God, Lee, dude, your mom had a target on your back if you're if she named you Dexter Point Dexter. Oh, uh, Buster oh, Point. No, that's Dexter. something different. Oh, much of a. Put Offspring lead singer name. Yeah, Offspring lead singer. According to his name Dexter is Dexter Holland. Brian Keith Dexter I like Dexter Point. I, I saw better. something where. All right, that's, that's, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Primary... All right. Uh, I saw something where somebody actually labeled him Dexter Point. Dexter. I like it. But it may have just been like a nickname somebody gave him. He should wear the glasses with like a yeah. piece of tape in the middle. <laughs> Dexter Holland is his official name. Uh, but as for pop punk, Offspring's probably the number two of that genre, in my opinion. And Blink-182 was the shooting stars of that genre as well. But as for the longevity, the grandfathers of pop punk, you gotta go with Green Day mm. and the lead singer, Billy Joe. Billy Joe, yeah. Also one of the most recognizable faces yeah. of that genre. Uh, God dang, you're right. I mean, Green, again, that's... That's one of those ones where it's just you can't. It's undeniable. It's like you mm-hmm. you see the face, and that's another band that's still going today. Yeah. You know, and it, it's crazy. I'll go ahead and put mine out there because you said it, it but it's not the lead singer. It, so my mine is y'all. This is my opinion, mm-hmm. but mine's for pop punk would be Travis Barker. Now there's a reason I didn't go with Billy Corgan. Now, Billy Corgan, I'm, Billy Joe. Bi- no, for my God dang it. Uh, Travis Barker from Blink-182. Lead singer, come yeah. on. Oh, uh, Tom DeLonge. Tom, Tom DeLonge. Why do I... Uh. Yeah, why do I... I keep... When I when you say Billy Corgan, I keep wanting to say Billy Corgi. Like a dog. <laughs> yeah. Like a dog named Billy Corgi. Billy Corgi. <laughs> Billy, if you have a Corgi, please name him Billy. Yeah. That'd be awesome. If you could do a mashup of a Corgi with Billy Corgan's face, that'd do be it. awesome, that'd too. That'd be awesome. But, so, you, you going down that route. The reason I went Travis Barker and not Tom DeLonge from Bleak 182 is because some people have look at Tom DeLonge and be like, ah, this dude's gonna work. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But I get it. when you look at Travis Barker, not only the dude's still going today, mm-hmm. part of... I would say probably the second biggest next to, you know... Uh, dude, in the hip-hop world, if you ask... Name anybody who was ever involved in punk. The most common name you're going to get is Travis, Travis Barker. Barker. Yeah. That's another reason I went for him. He's He also transcended a band that was in the genre, pop-punk, and started doing hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Hell, I seen him do drums for a, a, a symphony one time. Oh, yeah. He was doing for a symphony. That, he was yeah. killing it. But he transcended... A band and just started just yeah. showing how much he was as a great. Definitely the biggest star of that band. Oh, a thousand. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And not only that, the how often do you get to say the drummer is the is bigger the star? Right. I mean, you got yeah, Phil maybe Collins. Phil Collins. Yeah. Can uh, the Rev? I don't know. The Rev kind of. The Rev might kind of be in there. Might yeah. Be. Yeah. Damn. Neil Peart, maybe. Oh God. But then Danny again, Carey. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's I don't know. I don't know that Danny Carey is great, one of the greatest drummers of all time. I don't know if he transcends Maynard. Maynard though. Though, yeah. People are obsessed with Maynard. Yeah, that's a good good point. And, and yeah. also, I wanted to bring up the fact too is, um, uh, you got me thinking of Poindexter now for some reason. <laughs> but Travis Barker, dude, he also is is just a pop culture icon. 
Yeah, you know, he, he's yeah. pop culture. Yeah. I mean, he, absolutely. He was on, like on every MTV reality show. It was the Tommy show. Lee of his generation. Thank you. Yeah, that's that. That's why I picked him. Yeah. So and if we, I mean, think about that. If we covered uh, hair metal as a Ooh. genre, Tommy Lee could be one of those guys you throw out yeah. as maybe one of the goats. You know, even though he's a drummer. A good point. I mean, there's a lot of dope drummers that just seem to stand out. I mean, even um, um. Uh, my memory is terrible today for some reason. From Slipknot, man. Joey. Uh, Joey from Slipknot, dude. He just stood out. Yeah. And maybe that's yeah. because a lot of people say the drummers are the heartbeat of the band. Yeah, maybe absolutely. They're something. the backbone of the band for sure. Uh, what, what good is the band? What, I mean, there are, I guess there are. I go ahead. There I know, are bands out there. That I know don't what have you want to say. But I'm um, just saying, what if, if you're going to have a live band, the drums are the backbone of the song, yeah. right? Like you can pull it off, but it's not as good. No, you, you need that drummer. And even if you just you at least have to be somewhat mediocre. And and I'm this that's just mine. But going, I mean, so far again, our opinions. I think I think we're both got some good ones. Yeah. The last one is yeah. where I'm interested. <laughs> this is for our own amusement because we know most of you guys are not rap fans, rap and hip hop fans. But this is a point that is argued in the hip hop community to no end yes. and every person especially every rapper has their own opinion most rappers are going to say themselves if you've you know sold a ton of albums right but uh it's rap and my goat well, before well you, actually you need to give your goat yeah first. before you say that i want to say in the hip-hop community uh, being rappers as well it's you have two. I think every rapper has two. You have your own personal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Top five, and then you have the, the consensus, consensus of the yeah. top five. Yeah. So we're gonna stick with the consensus and, and not give our the consensus. There's like five or six names that everybody throws out there that could possibly be the goat. Yeah. Now I know most people would probably be like Tupac, Notorious yeah. B.I.G. Yeah. You know, you can name. Um, some people would say Easy E, Jay Z. Jay Z. Yeah. Some people say that, but my some people would even say Dr. Dre because of God, him being umbrella. a mogul. I mean, he's only dropped two albums in his entire career, but God. he's the biggest mogul in. Not the only pop. that, but the umbrella. Yeah, there is exactly. no game. Yeah, dude, we could. Okay, but mine, Lil Wayne. Yeah, yeah. one of the he titled himself the greatest rapper alive, mm -hmm. and no one questioned him. Yeah, no one questioned him. He, when he got on the song, you're, that is no longer your song. That's mm -hmm. him. And, I'm, I'm sorry. That's uh, Lil Wayne's song. When he and I would argue that if if you're familiar with Lil Wayne's mixtape series, he had the drought. Oh yeah. He and what the drought was was he would take the most popular beats from the most popular songs at the time, and he would remake or freestyle or make his own songs to the most popular rap songs out, mm -hmm. and it would be. Uh, now that beat no longer is yours. <laughs> yeah. His his version to your beat has become bigger than the song that you put out. Yeah, and I mean, been doing it since the age of thirteen, still yeah. going to date. Also, put out a rock album. Yes, and which is actually not a bad. <laughs> it's not. Many rappers have tried doing rock and metal albums. And they're objectively bad, yeah. right? <laughs> Maybe subjectively. Subject. I'm sure they all have fans, yeah. I guess. But most people are like, okay, there's this certain sound that rappers do when they try to do metal and rock, and they all sound kind of the same. Yeah. Lil Wayne was one that actually pulled it off oh, and no. made it sound like it could be on rock and metal radio. Here's a good one. Check out Prom Queen by Lil Wayne. That, mm -hmm. that rock... It, God, am I tripping? Or wasn't Travis Barker the drummer on that album? Oh yeah, he might have been. I think he probably worked a lot on that album. I think he yeah. did actually. I gotta think. I think yeah. he did. But with Lil Wayne being doing it since he was fourteen, multiple, multiple albums, multiple mixtapes. I think him and Gucci Man have the the Guinness Book of World Records for like the most mixtapes or something dropped like that or the most gangster grill or something like that. <laughs> I but, wouldn't doubt it. I mean, he makes a song in like five minutes. So. Dude, oh, dude, I saw him on a talk show uh, and it was, I can't remember, it was, you know, it was a typical morning talk show and they were like, so I heard, she, the lady was like, I, I heard you have about, you know, a thousand songs recorded. The one was like, 
I probably made a thousand songs in a month. <laughs> like, it's like, what? A thousand? It's like, I've been doing this since I'm 14. I'm almost, what, like, four, what do you think? Wayne's, like, probably 42, 43 now? Yeah. And yeah somewhere in there. still yeah. going in, man. And yeah. who hasn't he worked with? And what rapper doesn't want to work with Lil Wayne? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Everybody does. I mean, Lil Wayne, every rapper out there has a top five, like I said, and Lil Wayne is in it. I would agree. Like, there are very few we'll ever find that doesn't put Lil Wayne in there. And here's another thing I'll say. Everyone watching this right now, you're lying if you don't know one Lil Wayne song. I think everyone on yeah. the, who watches our channel happens to know one Lil Wayne song. Yeah. Who doesn't know Lollipop? Yeah. What's yours? You know, you're talking oh. about the, the prolificness of rappers and their songs. That's something that you don't see in other genres. As a rapper, you will make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs. We both have them. There, there are hard drives full of songs that we never even put out to the public because that's what you do in rap. It's much easier uh, to make a rap song, of course. Yeah. You just need the beat and you need your lyrics. So we, as rappers, make tons and tons of songs that can be put out long after we die. And that doesn't happen in other genres. It doesn't. It doesn't, but, unless your name is like a, um, unless you're like a. Come on, give me damn. What's a damn? I it. mean, Dr. Dre no, probably don't. No, I'll tell you that. Well, no, I would argue he beat wise. Yeah, beats now definitely beat, production beats, wise, He's probably got like a million. Yeah, he's up there, dude. <laughs> yeah, but no, I heard a. Who, there was a band we looked up and we were like, holy crap, they've got what was it, like thirty eight albums or something. We looked up. Uh, uh well, who was that? Uh, are you talking about Black Sabbath? Because it know they might have been Sabbath. We were very or, surprised honestly, at how many albums they had. It was like, God dang, really? Yeah. I don't know. Who, I want to. I'm curious. I, I feel like I know who yours is going to be, but I want to hear you say it. Oh, it's absolutely on the oh, list I, I of Lil you was, I thought you was just about to just <laughs> throw me. I'm like, it's absolutely. On onyx. the list. I thought you were about to say Onyx. Lil <laughs> onyx. <laughs> it's absolutely Onyx. It's actually naughty by nature. Okay. Get it right. <laughs> but no, Lil Wayne also has his list of greatest rappers, and this guy is on it. So therefore, he has to be in the conversation, and it's Eminem. I knew it. Because. I, and I'm, Eminem's on Lil Wayne's. Uh, yeah. Eminem, yeah. Lil Wayne's on Eminem's top. Yeah, five. exactly. I mean, they're they're both the two goats, and a lot of people throw Jay Z in that conversation. So there's three people that sit at the top of the hip hop world, and it's those three names. Yeah. I mean, dude, one of the greatest clips I've seen is when Lil Wayne tried to do like a little podcast, and he had Eminem on. Mm -hmm. Two of the goats, you know. Yeah. I picked Wayne, he picked uh, M. And uh, Lil Wayne was like, he was like, man, you know, I was writing this song the other day, <laughs> man. Or he, you know, Lil Wayne doesn't write, so he just freestyles it. He's like, you know, I was uh, he's like, but I, I don't want to say the same thing over. So he's like, I had to Google, and Eminem was like, you do that too? He was like, I have to Google things to make sure I don't say it too. And they were just yeah. like, <laughs> did we just become best friends? <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> did, that, did we just become best friends? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to look up the record sales too because I believe Eminem is the yeah. most record sales so ever would, in hip hop. I, I mean, he's one of the all time, all time biggest selling artists of all time. I mean, he's up there with other bands that you see like um, the Beatles, Mariah Carey, Garth Brooks, and Eminem. Yeah, like, and thinking about those artists that have been around a lot longer than Eminem, also. I mean, Eminem didn't burst on the scene till like, 98, 99. So, number one is Eminem. Number yeah. two is Jay-Z. Yeah. Number three is Lil Wayne. That makes sense. Number four is Drake, who was signed to Lil Wayne. Yeah. And then you got Tupac. and. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Outkast. Oh, wow. Yep. And there's always the honorable mentions, like you said before, of Tupac and Biggie. Yeah. But they did not have the longevity whatsoever. Man, I thought she was going to rant a little bit more about him. I thought you were yeah. gonna go in like, like. I mean, what else? Can, I mean, everybody knows I the know. story, right? Like, what else? He's the biggest selling rapper of all time. Uh, one of the most prolific. He's uh, has like a top five record for most syllables spit in a second. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I was actually looking that up one time. That 
the fastest rappers on earth. There's ones that you never heard of, yeah, right? That there's one always dude, those guys. Yeah, I know that one dude there, that he was like on like the Guinness Book of World, right? Yeah, and yeah. it wasn't Twista. It yeah, wasn't, exactly. There's just... guys like that, but then the guys that are actually in the hip hop industry that are big names. You know, you got Eminem, you got Busta Rhymes, Twista, Tech Nine, uh, Tone Deaf. Busy you know, bone. Yeah, busy. Yeah, busy's up there too. Dude, Actually, I saw on that list I looked up, Crazy Bone was higher than Busy Bone. I wouldn't. Ima- I wouldn't. But I'm, these guys are spitting like 15, 16 <laughs> syllables per second. Which is saw, ridiculous. It, was, it might have been Bill Burr. He was like, man, I'll listen to a bone. Oh, I got another tidbit about bone though. But I think it was some uh, comedian. He was like, man, I'll listen to bone. And he was like, you got you said so he's like you must have a lot on your mind to say that much in just one second he's yeah. like you just couldn't make the song longer he's like you just had to say <laughs> like, God, just, it was funny how i made the joke it's a it's a i mean it's a sporting thing yeah. like like we when we want to rap fast it's just to test ourselves mm-hmm. to, to see if we can do it and you know, and then there's people that make their name off of it, like Twista and what else? Yeah. You know, and then they're they're in competition with each other. Like, okay, so if Tech Nine does twelve point five syllables per second. Let's see if I can do thirteen. It's a competition. Yeah. And then you got to be on beat. It's got to make sense. It's got to flow. Yeah. It's got to. It, yeah, because people are going to analyze it. They're going to slow it down and make sure you're, you're actually doing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. I, my other tidbit I had about Bone. So if we continue this, you know, top five of this genre or top, or the goats of these genres, mm-hmm. uh, if we do boy bands, <laughs> I saw uh, I saw somebody say something, or it was a short, and it made a lot of sense. Okay. If you think about it, the biggest boy band before and sing before Backstreet Boys. Are you gonna say the Beatles? No, nah, le- uh, new era. Okay. New era. Yeah. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Think about it. Bro. I thought you were gonna say boys to men or something. Before Bone it, thugs and harmony. Think about it, dude. Bone started early night. I mean, they they fit the criteria. Before they sing, it, they don't just rap. They sing. They dance. They do the whole choreograph routine. Bef- yeah. Before Backstreet Boys, before NSYNC, before sixty eight degrees. Uh, they weren't before like the the boys to men, new kids on the block, yeah. all that stuff. But. I mean. But as far but yeah, as I get biggest, yeah. I, I can't remember how he said it, but he was like, if you think about it, they were five guys that sung, yeah. and so were the, everyone here knows, see you at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. I mean. See you, and they were they were a barbershop quintet originally. Quintet, but, yes. You know, you, they were the guys that stand on the street corner and sing, and they started working that into rap. Doom, doom, doom. Let's get up. 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 That's what they would do. Yeah. And they figured that we can work this into a rap and have our own special gimmick that nobody's ever done before. Easy E finds them and turns them into some of the biggest stars. Their story's so crazy. They yeah. literally, man. I was watching a documentary. Oh, and the 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 Ouija board, the, yeah. the witchcraft, and Satan Re and all Dude, that. I was watching, and and we'll we'll get off of rap because I know we've talked yeah, so yeah. much about rap. But their story, dude. He was it was literally originally lazy, crazy. Those are the first two, mm-hmm. and then crazy started hanging out with flesh and they found out that flesh and lazy were brothers and mm-hmm. so it was just them three and then they got up with wish and they're busy and they, and they told everybody in cleveland they, they was like look bro we're taking a one-way trip to uh, a trip we're going straight to la yeah and and it worked and it worked it yeah. worked yeah hey, eminem did the same thing yeah went out to la for the rap olympics and dr dre heard him he was like i believe it was on like a morning show or something on the radio and huh. dr dre heard him yeah okay i don't know why i thought it was a demo tape that Somehow, well, he was pushing his demo tape infinite at the time. Didn't you tell me we were at like somebody told us it, it might have been Dave or Taylor that we were at a show or they were at a show and M was like walking around, it was like some dude in a hooded sweatshirt. It probably was a complete <laughs> lie, but because <laughs> yeah, yeah, it probably was. A complete I mean, lie. unless he was in Detroit back in the early 90s, yeah. All right, let's do some WTF. Guys, again, leave your birthday down in the comment section, and we will read the craziest stories that happen on your mm-hmm. birthday. Again, WTF does not stand for what the... It stands for what the... Florida. 100%. So, leave your birthdays down in the comments uh, section, and we will read yours on the next 
podcast coming up. Smoke, you ready for the first? Yeah, one? I'm ready. Shout out to Amber Ray. Amber Ray 214. Amber Ray's birthday. By the way, Amber Ray says, I love you guys. Please do my birthday next. Amber Ray's birthday is 1025. That'd be October yeah, 25. So Amber, what the Florida? Thank you so much. We love you too. Thank you, Amber. We love you too, 100%. Uh, 1025. All right. October 25. I remember we did one, and it was, I said an animal. You was like, no, it was an alligator. And I was like, no, it was a, you was <laughs> no, like. it was a shark. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and you was, I was like. <laughs> I'm so used to hearing alligators on these it, stories. It makes sense. That when I said shark, my mind thought alligator. alligator. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and you actually heard it right. Yeah. yeah. All right, what you got? <clears throat> oh, this is kind Alligator of somewhere. I know it's coming. Well, a uh, Florida man wax acquaintance with hatchet. During argument over spilled beer. What, like, whack him over the head? Apparently so. Holy crap. Over Ooh. beer? <clears throat> over a spilt beer. Mm. A uh, Florida man has been found has found himself behind bars after he allegedly whacked an acquaintance with a hatchet several times during an argument over spilled beer. Thanks for saying that. We just said that. Uh, I'm going to leave his name out. Was arrested and charged with attempted Wow. I don't know if we should be saying that on YouTube in all the words they block these days. After the incident that unfolded in the 7700 block of North Davis Highway in Pensacola, Lord. Uh, acquaintance was visiting a nearby tent. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, they were in tents. A uh, 56-year-old man accused him of spilling a beer. Uh, that sparked an argument, and he continued to blame the victim. That's when the guy allegedly grabbed a silver hatchet with a blue handle and started to swing it toward Mm-mm. the man, striking him several times. Oh, that was my last Coors Light! <laughs> yeah, apparently. Dang it, man. That's a dark one, That man. is a dark one. We, we like hearing the funny stories, but sometimes they get dark. Yeah, in Florida, you never know. Amber yeah, Ray, I mean, I could have gave you the Florida man sentenced to 10 years in federal prison for impersonating a federal officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, either, one, either one of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, this is what the Florida. I mean, we yeah. don't, it, it's called what the Florida. Something crazy happens every day, but they're not all funny. Exactly. Amber Ray, that was your what the Florida. Mm-hmm. You not ready for the next one? Sure. Yeah. The next one comes from Jester James 7. Shout out Jester James 7. Jester James's birthday, July 22nd. So oh, wow. what the Florida? July 22nd. 22nd. <clears throat> oh, this one has a whole list for July 22nd. Damn. That must be a day that's just... Is that a holiday? <laughs> no, that's not a holiday. Let's see. Uh, Florida man and... Oh, Florida man, woman... And church weave a <laughs> perplexing tale together. Oh, let's get something a little more, a little more. What the heck? <clears throat> let's try this one. <clears throat> Florida man accures. <laughs> hold on. A cru- this- Florida. <laughs> that was the South came out of. Accurs. Accurs. Florida man accused of steering urine test to drug lab. Steering. steering. It says Florida man accused of steering. I feel like that's a medical Is it term. supposed to be stealing? Let's read it. We'll read uh, it. A Florida man is accused of taking at least $70,000 in kick bowel steering for steering urine test to a drug testing lab. I see when they say steering, meaning he's probably getting them by uh, when they are filled. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> he was arrested last week and charged with six counts of patient brokering wow. according to delray beach police report is that a felony or a misdemeanor <laughs> what is it? Uh, this... what is the charge uh patient well, brokering patient six brokering. counts of patient brokering. seventy thousand dollars in kickbacks wow. investigation began in 2019 a uh, task force filed patient brokering charges against the guy. He told investigators he got a kickback from the Pensacola, mm. oh Pennsylvania-based lab, oh. Genesis Diagnostics, to steer urine test his way. Well, god dang, this dude's stealing pee 
Yeah. And steer. Now I'm wondering if steering means altering, altering the test. The test. That like, it, okay, now that is that definitely I could see how that could be illegal. Imagine like, are, is he like taking stuff that should be sent to one lab and, and sending them all to this certain lab to get money? We're gonna have to do some research on this one. Yeah, definitely. But if there if if someone dude, you think about it, like think about like uh maternity wards where uh you know, men go in and give stuff you know, semen yeah, samples. Yeah. Like if you mix those up, like you're expecting a a a, a, a black child, and you get a <laughs> you get a Nordic kid. looking kid. Yeah. <laughs> like wait a minute, like that could be very legal. So like if yeah. if this was a high profile like case and somebody was like, hey, check my urine, you'll see that I'm I don't have any drugs in my system. But if you're messing it around, yeah. it could be illegal. Yeah. So apparently. He was getting a kickback from the lab in Pennsylvania that was that he was sending all the tests to, and it is illegal to get kickbacks. When we say kickbacks, are we talking like money? Yeah, okay. yeah. So apparently they were offering what was it uh, up to one hundred and fifty dollars? I think it said. Damn. Yeah. How, bro? He could. Yeah, it says he would receive one hundred and fifty dollars per test, then give one hundred and twenty-five to his conduit at a sober home. Dude, from 2016-2017, he got $772,911. Mm-hmm. Bro, all right, I'm going to be honest with you. This dude, pro- I don't know, this is effed up, but he could probably have pulled one over the, on this company if they were like, hey, bring us this urine. He could have mm-hmm. just peed in his own cup and just <laughs> say, hey, here's this guy. I'll be back in two minutes. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. It's like, here you go, here you go, here. Bring the pee coming. It's like, I'll be yeah. back in 10 minutes. <laughs> I got to finish this hot jug of water. <laughs> Speaking of that, did you hear the story about the guy that got busted at the fertility clinic? The the guy who was actually selling the the specimens as, like you were talking about, for artificial insemination. He was selling the sperm samples? Yeah, so it turns out he has like 70 80 kids running around jesus Christ. because they all thought they were getting this certain type of and person he was filling them all himself that's gotta be illegal and oh that's, it is yeah. well actually no there were no laws for it that's but crazy. now all these kids are coming out and finding out they all have the same dad you know what if it's not illegal all those women who had those children that got that were that were falsely they were misled pregnant, yeah y'all better I, I'm talking child oh, support. Yeah. Y'all better hit him for child support. You yeah. got you got 800 child support. <laughs> I mean, under, that's the thing. Like by law, if you get it at a a, a lab, you know, like the the father doesn't have to pay child support, so he's clear within the law. Dude, but there's got to be a there, yeah, because there. it is kind of a malpractice, right? So you can sue the guy. Uh, it's not going to be criminal charges, but you can sue Ooh. yourself, and there may be tons of kids out there nah, trying to bro them. there if there has to be some law to where if you take a sample mm-hmm. put your sample into multiple samples and it's almost kind of like i don't want to say forgery but you're 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 taking something and replacing it with something that other people it's almost like a like if you go to like for instance me being having anxiety yeah i i have to have certain medication so if i go to to a doctor and that Follow me here. Yeah. I go to the doctor and my, I go to the pharmacy and the pharmacy says, hey, here's your medication. If I don't take this medication, I'm going to die. But there's someone at the pharmacy that says, you know what? I got the same exact pills, look the exact same. It says, here you go. If they find, if they yeah. give it to me, looks the same, smells yeah, the same. Yeah, falsifying. Same. So yeah. that's a charge. Yeah. I would assume this is the same thing, right? Yeah. I mean, but uh, technically, there. that's what they said. There were no laws. I brought up the article here. Um the article says a fertility doctor used his sperm unwitting on unwitting women. That's their children want answers. Let me read. I'm trying to see exactly how many. Uh, he was using his own from a patient's children are enormously consequential questions. Wait, many couple there. You know what, trash talkers? That's why we got you guys here. <laughs> Y'all yeah. let us know what is. There? Trying to see exactly how many kids have come forward so far. Well, wouldn't it be the pa- the mother? a really long article. And well, many... no, the the kids are. That's the thing. When he was doing this in the eighties and nineties, there were no DNA tests, so he thought he would never be found out. Damn, there were no DNA tests in the nineties. 
No, I mean, how would they probably do? late nineties when? But no, they weren't commercially available at that time. You so so what? You can't do paternity tests like in the nineties? Yeah, you can do paternity tests. Is I it? don't know. I don't know. I don't know exactly. Like, think about Mar. You are not the father. Like, <laughs> yeah. how'd they figure that out? So that was. We're about to talk about this off camera. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We have to look up when that started. We got one more because that was part of the article, though. That Chester James, you got us on a long conversation here now. All right, yeah. we got one more. Let's 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 run through a quick one here. You ready for the mm-hmm. last one? Yeah. This one is Mike Wynn. Thank you, Mike Wynn, for sending your birthday in October twelfth. I think we might have done this one before, Mike Wynn. But yeah. if not, let's see if we have. Uh, don't 12. see it in the list of recent okay. searches. So let's find out. I bet I cleared it out by accident. October 12th. <laughs> That's a lot of October trash talkers out there. Shout out to all the Libras. My mom's birthday is in October. Florida all right, man. There, there we, we go. go. A naked Florida man with crossbow who claims aliens were after him shot. Let's see. Let's bring that up. Uh, deputy cleared for... Oh, we did cover this one. I thought so. Yes, Wait, yes. but just read the title. You got another one? Yeah, because we covered that one like two or three podcasts ago. Let's try this one. Florida man breaks into woman's house, sits on her couch, and makes unusual requests. You're getting shot. (laughs) And in Florida, that's a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you go in somebody's house, you can die. No one will hold them I have heard cops say do it. Yeah. Because then you got to Florida man is now behind bars after he forcibly wake a force of flee so forcibly god dang it my tongue just stopped working today uh kicked his way into a woman's home <laughs> according to marion county sheriff's office darnell oh god i gotta uh, leave his name out <laughs> i'm all off my game now he was arrested and charged with criminal mischief hey after an incident that unfolded on friday uh the the man was reportedly yelling belligerent outside a woman's home. Uh, deputies said, "I'm afraid. Don't give out our address, bro. I'm afraid <laughs> for you to keep reading at this point. What else you got? I'm trying to get to the meat of the story. These articles just give so much he, fluff around the outside. Yeah, he basically entered the woman's home and sat on the couch. Deputy said he didn't try to commit any crimes while inside. The woman said, but he did ask for water and something to smoke." Uh, then he became belligerent again, uh, resumed yelling, leaving her house. But it doesn't really say exactly what he did. It doesn't. Yeah, that's what I was searching through to see. I was taken in custody. Spontaneously said he kicked the woman's door in because he was trying to warn her that she was in danger. Huh. But it doesn't. Apparently, all he did was kick. Ask for some water. <laughs> yeah, he kicked in the door. Bam. Sat on the couch. Ask her for. Some <laughs> he said things. he kicked in the door. Ma'am, I don't have a four four. <laughs> but I'd like a nice cold water and a cigarette. I kicked in the one. door without Not waving four, the four, four four. I just need a cup of water and a cigar. <laughs> and a little more and more. A, there you go. 100%. To the trash talkers who sent your birthday in for what they yeah. ordered. Thank you guys for doing that. We need more birthdays, guys. Leave your birthday down in the comment section so we can read your story. I mean, your birth, your, your Florida man story on next podcast we do here. Again, guys, thank y'all for all the comments. And let us know, what are your top five? Or I'm sorry, what are your... Who was your goat in those four genres that we brought up today? Grunge, new metal, pop punk, and rap. Curious to see what the trash talkers are going to say. Mm-hmm. You got anything else, Mo? No, that's it for this week. That's it for this week. Thank you to all the trash talkers for hanging out with us. We'll see y'all next time. And with that being said, my name is Barry Andrew Hollywood Six. Bye. I am Larry Smokey Ramirez Cowboy. And we are over and out. Douches. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs>